what is going on everybody it's Alex coming back here with another video and today Carson Wentz was just traded to the Indianapolis Colts for a 2021 third round pick as well as a conditional 2022 second round which could flip to a first given the a certain like 70 to 75 percent starting snap usage so uh quick little thoughts on the trade I think it's great for both teams because if the Colts actually boom with him then they get the Eagles at least get a first round and a third but it's like Carson Wentz wasn't going to get that much value anyways on the Eagles. You're basically getting potentially a first and a third for Carson Wentz. And that's wonderful. It's a really good offering, especially since the Rams had to trade Goff and two firsts away to get a, one quarterback. So instead of trading away a first to be able to get rid of Carson Wentz's contract, you guys are getting potentially a first and a third. That is really special. He's going to Frank Reich as well. So Indianapolis Colts, you guys, that could be a late first. That could be um, a late – well, this is going to be like a mid to late third. So I think it's great for both teams. The Eagles probably want some extra line depth. That's an extra – that's a third-round pick right there. You can get an extra weapon there, a Tylen Wallace, if he even falls that far. There's a lot of things you, we can do with these picks. So I love this. It's awesome. If you guys are new, hit the like button, comment, subscribe. You, can, you guys know what to do. Uh, we want to get to 3K by draft day, so – I'm getting a little bit nervous on that goal, but let's let's make it happen, guys. We're almost we're like almost there to two uh, two thousand, just above nineteen hundred right now. So, you guys can make that happen. Let's make that happen. Let's have some fun. Starting off with the number six pick in this draft. Let's see how the board falls, because my dumbass literally. Of course, I I don't I have my freaking camera way too big. Um, I had this run last time and there was a, it was insane. Like Jamar at two, Devonte at five. So now this is a little bit more stereotypical, right? This is actually, this is exactly how I usually have my board fall, like identical to this. So looking at the picks who are on the board, uh, again, we're not going to do trades just because a little too RNG. If you guys don't know what that means, it's called random number generator. It's just, it's too random and it's not fair to other teams. And plus it makes it a little too complicated, but Eagles, um, I mean, you're looking at it. You got Devonte Smith here. You could use him with Travis Fulgham as a one-two punch, but then again, you could also get Kyle Pitts. It's a toss-up for me, guys. If we're gonna look at the depth here, this is something that I that you guys need to understand. Kyle Pitts is a generational type tight end, right? We don't usually see a guy like this at all. People were saying T.J. Hawkinson could be the next coming of Gronk. He, we all knew he wasn't. He was just a really solid tight end. Kyle Pitts is exponentially better, especially in the pass game. Not as good of a run blocker as TJ Hawkinson. I will give him that. But looking at the next guy we could get is Pat Fryermuth. And I did a full scouting report on Pat Fryermuth. You guys can ask me for that if you guys want. It's on PTST. And uh, I I really am not a huge fan of Pat. He I give him a mid-second, which is exactly where they have him. But it's like when you look down the board, there just isn't enough to replace. And next year, the tight ends aren't that great either. If like If you wanted to wait another two more drafts after this and get Michael Mayer out of uh, Notre Dame fine but you guys have Goddard coming up on contract in one year as well as Earth, who you're trying to move as like as of right now so I'm thinking like okay so Kyle Pitts that's probably going to be the likely option we look at wide receiver let's just say we go second round uh, I'm I'm a big fanboy of Dwayne Eskridge you guys might not even know who he is you guys have probably never heard of his name please watch some tape on this guy you know I'm Madden when you guys like just hit you know it's like man coverage and you just hit the slant for just a hundred yard touchdown on like the goal line. That is exactly who Dwayne Eskridge is. He is four three speed, like four three flat speed, and he is just so dynamic with his feet. Really good. If you guys want to have a dynamic weapon, Dwayne Eskridge is your guy. I love him so much, and he's played both slot and outside, so he's gonna be perfectly fine, even though he has height issues. Tylen Wallace as well. Dimitri Felton, Diami Brown. There are guys later on who I think have pretty damn good value in comparison to a guy like Devontae Smith, who I'm just genuinely scared about, like with his weight and size. The dude said he was going to put on pounds and he literally couldn't. He like said, I'm going back to Alabama. I'm putting on weight and being better for the NFL. He did better for the NFL, but he didn't get to put on weight. That's scary. That looks like his frame's maxed out. And that that's a big issue if you're getting cracked by people in the NFL, it doesn't mean that he won't last a year, but he might not last five to 10 years in the NFL. And if you want a dynamic weapon like that, you need to make sure he's healthy. Uh, it's like availability is everything. Jalen Waddle, another great pick here. You know, he's so, he's such a stud. I love Jalen Waddle. He's just very, very, very bursty. But again, I have Devonte Smith over Jalen Waddle just because of the fact that Devonte did it without Jalen. 
So it's just like we saw Devontae become a beast without anybody else there scaring the defense. Well, Devontae pretty much had John Mechie and then Billingsley, who are both not Jalen Waddle caliber. So I'm going to be looking here at Kyle Pitts. You guys definitely won't like this pick. Again, we're looking at the cornerback depth as well. Second round, you can get uh, Greg Newsom, who allowed a zero, zero passer rating, like 0.0. .0. In, on third and fourth downs. Thank you to PFF for reminding me about that. Tyson Campbell, another guy I love. Elijah Molden, if you guys want a slot. Uh, Keith Taylor, have him in the late second round. Lily just did his report last night. Like, you got some good talent all around the board. I'm going to go Kyle Pitts just because of the lack of value later on. Again, he could be he could be technically wide receiver two in this class. I'm not really on that board, but again, he could be your Goddard and Earth's replacement. You don't need to – you you guys have a cap issue as it is. Let's just say he turns out to be the guy who we think he is, Kyle Pitts. And, like, obviously we're not doing any trades. But if he becomes the guy who we think he could be, then, like, you don't need to re-sign Goddard or Ertz. And that's a lot of money that you guys could be using towards guys on the offensive line. Why the hell are we getting so many damn trade offers? Like, this is just ridiculous. I'm sorry, guys, for this. This is just absolute baloney. But, of course, we couldn't even get Pat Fryermuth because Pat Fryermuth just went. So we would have had to go Brevin Jordan in, like, the third, which probably would be going to the Ravens, too. So it, it looks like it was a good pick here. Eric Stokes is a primarily zone corner. He needs to be a zone corner. Another guy who I did a scouting report on. So him going to the Bengals, I'm not 100% sure if that's the best idea. I know WJ3 is pretty solid in sticky coverage but looking at the board right now we can look at wide receiver who can we get we can get two two out oh god no um i'm looking probably in the third round then if we want to get Tylen wallace in the third i think that might be the best bet diami brown is somebody who i'm really targeting right now because i think the best job is i mean best thing to do is fulgum rager one extra boundary threat so whether you want that to be Dwayne eskridge who can separate like an mf keeping it clean for uh for youtube or almond ross st brown be my guest, but you know, I don't think that we need a guy like Elijah Moore, a guy like Tutu Atwell, who are probably going to be primarily slot dudes. So, looking at the corners on the board, you got Aaron Robinson here. He's a nasty man corner, he's a very mean, very aggressive man corner. Somebody who we could definitely, definitely be looking at. Another third round guy, though, like I'm looking at the third round, and we could be possibly getting one of these three guys, if not Trill Williams or Keith Taylor, who are really good man corners. You know, they're uh, also Keith Taylor, pretty damn good in zone. Like I had, I have Keith Taylor as more of a press zone type of guy, but he could also play press man very well. Tyson Campbell, just amazing man coverage. Uh, Greg Newsom, I'm pretty sure he's good in man. He fought to a good press zone corner. So whatever you guys want to do, if you guys want to stick to an aggressive scheme, plus you guys need to remind me about what your defensive scheme is. I'm pretty sure you have a guy coming from the Colts who usually ran like, I believe a press to uh, cover two press man. I mean, not press man, press zone, but. You guys can always remind me on that. If that's the case, I'm like 100% in on Keith Taylor for the squad. Regardless, honestly, I'm targeting Keith Taylor in the third, whether you guys like it or not. Let's look at linebacker depth. We got Chaz Surratt here. Jabril Cox in the third would be interesting as well. Um, that's something that I might want to target, but Dylan Moses is also here. It's, it's interesting because we are running a 4-3 right now, and I can't really think of a good third linebacker on the squad. Dylan Moses, we already know the Saban Belichick tree teams are going to be possibly taking Dylan Moses in the first. That's just a guaranteed Dylan Moses. He is a little bit of an iffy guy in coverage against, uh, against running backs, but like, damn, he's good. Chaz Surratt as well. This is a sticky position guys. Cause I'm like, Ooh, we could wait on one of these dudes, but I'm kind of stuck on Chaz Surratt here. He is, he is so good. He is a very dynamic blitz threat. He is going to be, he's kind of, he seems like an eagle to me. He's hard-headed. He has, he's a great captain of that defense, former quarterback. You know, oh man, I'm stuck between these two guys. I know Dylan Moses is a much higher floor and we want to look at their birth dates. Um, Chester Ross almost two years older. Well, no, not almost two years. He's like one and a quarter years older than Dylan Moses. Like it's up to you guys. Pick who you want here, but I'm going to go Dylan Moses just because. Uh, again, we we could just definitely use a guy like Dylan Moses on the squad to be able to raise ourselves up to a new level, adding him with Alex Singleton, Davion, uh, Davion Taylor back there. You have a really young, really raw linebacking core who could develop into a very good one. You know, these guys are all pretty solid guys. Again, not doing trades. It's, it's something that I would 100% be down for. And trust me, 
with Carson Wentz out of the building, maybe you're going to be wanting to develop the offense a little bit more. Obviously, we got Kyle Pitts for that. Now let's develop the defense a little bit more because, I mean, the defense for Philadelphia, the whole entire reason you guys won the Super Bowl was because your defensive front was able to get pressure. And to be honest, I mean, you guys up 500 yards that game, but you got to make sure that you can do, you can take care of the back as well. Obviously, Chesterot wouldn't be here. So that's another thing. I was thinking maybe letting Chesterot fall. Tyson Campbell went. That's really unfortunate. I was really hoping that we could get Tyson Campbell. I want to see, we, we do have a pick at 84. So uh, thanks to, of course, uh, the, why am I blanking the Colts? I love the Colts. Next, we got, we got, ooh, ooh, this is kind of scary because I want to go corner here. But the question is, can we wait for a guy like Tylen Wallace or Deami Brown? I don't know if we can. We could wait for Seth Williams though, because I'm a I'm a high guy on all like I'm a high guy on Demetri Felton, but he's not going to be the type of guy that we want in this squad. It's, it's down to it's down to Tylen Wallace, um, and pretty much Greg Newsom here. But we could wait for Keith Taylor. I'd be much happier with Tylen Wallace and Keith Taylor than I would be with Greg Newsom and uh, Deami Brown, even though I love Deami. So we're going to go Tylen Wallace here. He's a dynamic deep threat, man. People say that he could comp to his uh, former buddy. I don't know if he played actually with – he might have. Um, I'm forgetting the guy's first name, Washington, on the Steelers. I'm a Steelers fan too. I should know this. James Washington. But James Washington as a comp would be quite interesting. I think Talon Wallace has a better chance of being better than James Washington. So – Honestly, I take it all the way. Now, looking at the guys who are on the board, we could be going Keith Taylor here, and I'm probably going to be going that route. We could look at safety as well. Looking at the guys who are on the board, dude, all the safeties are falling, and that is music to my ears. Javon Holland would be an interesting guy if we wanted to get slot corner here, but I think we really do need to get a boundary because, again, Maddox is not my guy. I'm not a fan of Maddox right now. Elijah Mould would be a great target, but I have a late second on Keith Taylor, and... Him in this scheme, if he gets coached up by, like, look at him. He's six foot three. He's actually six foot three. They say six foot two here. He's six foot three. I watched him on tape. He's six foot three. And everything else in the world besides TDN, who likes to um, put in crap information. So never trust TDN. He's six foot three. So with that length, with that size, he has really good speed as well. This is a guy who probably will be going in the second. I wouldn't, I was thinking about maybe taking him at our first third round pick. Like, you guys can just watch him in the Senior Bowl. He's he's really sticky in coverage. Like, you can definitely cover a lot. And if we can get a good safety over the top, hopefully that we can find a good safety. Elijah Molden to the Chargers. That would just be unreal. Uh, if we can get a good safety in the fourth, that would be great. We don't have a fourth, do we? I knew it. We, we traded away that for Jannard Avery, I believe. But we can still find guys like Ardarius Washington, Caden Stearns down the line, Divine Diablo, who I'd be perfectly fine putting into the squad. So I'm not really worried too much about it, but it is something that we should note is that I totally busted on the idea that we all our Darius Washington is going to be gone too. See, this is where I'd want to trade up right here. Like this would be great. Like we could just trade up right there. I don't, did you, I don't know if you guys saw that trade. Like they were offering their fourth round pick for, and their next year seven for pretty much our fifth round pick this year. The, that's TDN logic for you guys. That's just complete BS. I mean, I would hope our Darius Washington would fall to us, but it's not going to happen. If it does, I mean, literally pop champagne. I love our Darius Washington, but it's, it can't happen. It can't happen. It can't happen. It can't happen. It happened. Holy shit. Yep, we're going. Our Darius Washington could be a second round pick. Like, he is that good. Super dynamic, rangy safety. I don't think Mills is the type of guy. I don't think the Green Goblin is the type of guy. Uh, again, uh, we have Kayvon Walls developing a strong safety as well. I think we need to get a true free safety here in Ardarius Washington, somebody who has a lot, a lot of potential. Number two safety in 2019, according to PFF, Ardarius Washington. What a steal. Oh, my goodness. I did not think that we had a chance of getting him. And we also have another pick here. You know, this pick we need to use on boosting this offensive line. Ooh, Sedarius so Hutchinson's here. Drake Jackson is here. Ooh, man, you guys know I love these guys. Uh, I don't really like any more of these tackles. Josh Ball is probably the next one that I like. So I'm 100% in on getting some extra offensive line depth because we all know Kelsey is pretty damn old. And I'm like looking right here. So Darius Hutchinson is, or Hutchinson is going to be a type of guy where you're just drafting pure potential. Drake Jackson is going to be a guy who I'm very confident he can start. 
I think this is going to be the best pick by far. I saw him in the senior bowl. This dude looks like a freaking animal. Like Sedaris Hutchinson is an athletic monster, literally athletic monster. He can apparently squat three times his own weight as well as bench it. So yeah, yeah, he is a freak of nature. But Drake Jackson, I mean, you know how well Kentucky runs that ball. He's a captain of that offensive line, really smart player, should not be going in the fifth round, but hey, cheers to us. He is Drake Jackson out of Kentucky, 100% worth this pick, being able to get that succession plan for Kelsey as well with a year to go. And we already know how injuries have riddled their offensive line. So being able to get some extra depth there, that is exactly something that we need to do. I don't like how the fact that um, the Colts are still drafting a quarterback. You know, I'm very happy that TDN updated the amount of picks because I wanted to make sure that happened before this video. But that, that's just kind of stupid. They're drafting a guy who's 25 years old at quarterback basically to be a backup. I mean, you have Jacob E's in there. So not really a 100% a fan of that, but that's okay. There's a lot, thing, a lot more things I'd probably be more pissy about. But looking now, we could be looking at edge here just to get some extra, uh, some extra youth, some extra youngth. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of any of these guys. We could probably look at the guy from Coastal Carolina, Teron Jackson. He's probably the next favorite guy that I have. Could look on the interior of the defensive line because, oh, man, there, there's really just nothing here. Let's look at best player on the board. That might be the best thing that we do. We got some good wide receivers on the board as well. We already have like eight dudes on contract for at least one more year. Not really sure if that's the right route to go. We might want to be looking more into the cor uh, cornerback route or the second running back route because we are possibly losing Boston Scott as well. Ooh, ooh, there's two guys here. Wild Goose, I've heard a lot about. I don't know if he plays slot or not. Looking at his size, he definitely could play slot. But apparently this guy, this Wild Goose guy, is somebody by PFF as they're saying like he's going to be a late round steal. Similar to like what I saw in – the central Michigan guy, I'm forgetting his name. I believe he's on the Buccaneers right now, but I mean, I'm telling you, uh, of course, very unprofessional. I have the, I have my Twitter up there at the top links are in the description, of course, but Ooh, we have Jalen John, uh, Jalen Darden here. I know he's going to be only a slot, but can we like, can we not do that? Like, damn, he would be insane on this squad. Jalen Darden would be so fun. I know we have Jalen Rager, but shoot, we could have the two Jalen's on the squad. You guys know me. I love Jalen Darden. I'm going to be doing an in-depth report on him very soon. So that opinion might honestly change. Dax Mill would be a good target, though. Man, Dax Mill could be a great replacement for uh, for Travis Fulgham if we don't want to keep him because, of course, cap issues. Uh, Dax Mill, to me, is going to be this pick here. That way that we're going to have two really big targets on the outside who are really good at adjusting to the ball. Uh, Dax Mill, I mean, if you guys watched him play, for BYU, this guy does make some very acrobatic catches, and I, I like him. He doesn't gain that great of separation. This is why he's going to be taken right, probably around this spot in the draft, but, dude, this guy is pretty special for who he is at BYU. This guy is special. You know, it, it's something that you definitely need to take a look at if you guys haven't seen it. Dax Milne, to me, is an absolute beast. He'd be a great locker room presence as well. These BYU boys, they know what's up, but um, I'm really a huge fan of Dax Milne. And another guy who I am actually going to be doing a report on sometime soon. I would love Jalen Darden here, but again, we need more boundary threats given the fact that we're going to be losing a lot of guys due to cap issues. We might want to get an extra offensive lineman here, but we already got the safety route, already got the corner route covered. Now we could just relax. Might even get Marco Wilson at this next spot just to say, screw it. Like, great freaking value. Why not, guys? You can definitely get some extra depth here. There's no doubt about it. Marco Wilson, I mean, you could technically put, because he has played snaps in the slot, you could put Keith Taylor in the slot. I don't think you, I don't think you can pass up on a guy like Marco Wilson. He has some personality issues, which, again, we want to clear up that locker room, but it's almost too good a value to pass up at this spot where it's like, hey, if you suck, you're a six-round pick, right? Like, if you have a sucky personality, get the hell out of here. Marco the Shoe Wilson, I like him. He's going to be definitely a guy who fits similar to... Uh, a guy like uh, Darius Slay, I don't think he's ath as athletic, but I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, look at him. He's pretty young as well. So you know what? We're going to get Marco Wilson here, whether you guys like it or not. I think that's a solid ass pick. You know, it's, it's pretty good. Look at this. Look at this draft guys. We got true offensive weapons. Look at this. We got Talon Wallace, Kyle Pitts and Dax Milne. These guys could all develop into starting caliber, like starting uh, high end weapons. 
And then you also got some offensive line fixes. We could go a quarterback here just to get some extra depth, like Felipe Franks. Uh, something I'm definitely considering right now. You guys might not like that at all, but I'm 100% considering that given the fact that, well, I don't think we want uh, Nate Sudfeld. Is his name Nate Sudfeld? I don't know. Your backup as your real backup. But looking at the guys on the offensive line, I'm not really seeing anybody I like here. If Josh Ball is here, that could be the pick. But then again, it's like, do we need to do that? It's like, ugh. Let's look at the edge. If Teron Johnson's here, ooh, he's here. I don't think we can pass up on Teron Johnson or Jackson. Not Teron Johnson. Teron Jackson here out of Coastal Carolina. Put up some really good reps and at the senior bowl. And like he he's pretty damn good. He has a lot of potential if you can put him behind Brandon Graham. These guys who potentially could be cut for cap for cap issues. Teron Jackson is just gonna provide some extra depth on your squad. It's a seventh round pick for Christ's sakes, guys. Let's take Teron Jackson out of Coastal Carolina. Be able to just get some extra defensive help here. I mean, that's the one pick in the draft that I'm not just like drooling over because all of these picks, we could have gotten Jalen Darden there too. I mean, I wish we had another seventh round pick and we could just say, you know what, screw it. We got Jalen Darden too. And if he doesn't go, then, I mean, hell, who just took him? Uh, do the Jack, Jags don't need to take him, but it's also like us, best case scenario where it's like, huh, might as well. We get Jalen Darden in the seventh. Like, there's just too good. Honestly, another guy who I'd recommend signing is Robert Rochelle in free agency, like UDFA. But let's take a quick look at the picks. Kyle Pitts out of Florida. I mean, I you know me. I like getting my cornerbacks, but I fell in love with Key Taylor as well as Elijah Molden when I watched them play. Kyle Pitts is an absolute stud. You know, the, again, the value drop-off is way too much. And next year's class, I'm not really sure if there are any, like, real high-end high end tight ends. I haven't taken a look at them yet. But Kyle Pitts is better than all of them combined. And look at him. He's a true junior. He's young as hell. So I'm absolutely in love with this. Dylan Moses, a high-end pick, a high potential right there. You know, Dylan Moses was supposed to be like the 10th dude in this draft class when it started out. I think I had him like at 12 to like the Browns or something in my first ever mock draft. You guys can take a look at that. It was over 250 videos ago. I think this is my 251st. So crazy that I've gotten this far. But Tylen Wallace, again, we fixed up this offense so well. Like Kyle Pitts, Tylen, uh, Dax Milne, Jalen Rager, Quez Watkins, Travis Fulgham. You guys have a variety of weapons that can also keep them healthier. We already know health is a big issue. Safety. We already got our Darius Washington there. You get um, what Kayvon Wallace continuing to develop. Like You're going to potentially have a really good dynamic duo back there. Got Marco Wilson, Keith Taylor, as well as, of course, Darius Big Play Slay. And then, of course, you got some edge here. And Drake Jackson, the successor to the man, the myth, the legend, Travis, not Travis, Jason, Kelsey. So let me know what you guys think. I'm not, I never did the Cal Pitts train until recently. So I thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.